Let's look at how to find the moment of inertia of a toilet paper roll, um, otherwise known as an annulus or a thick tube. It's like a tube with pretty thick walls. Well, here's our toilet paper roll, and we're going to find the moment of inertia about, well, the usual axis, the axis that goes uh, along the center line, the axis of symmetry there, the toilet paper roll. Uh, and a better view for this is going to be to look at this thing from the side. So the radius of the cardboard tube in the middle uh, we'll call R1, and the uh, outer radius of the thing we'll call R2. All right, well, if you go to find the moment of inertia of anything, what you do is you take, well, little bits of mass times the square of their distance from a rotation axis. So you add up all of the MR squareds. And your situation would look like this if you had a, a bunch of discrete masses, meaning, like, say you had three point masses, there'd be three terms. Mass 1 times radius 1 squared plus mass 2 times radius 2 squared plus mass 3 times radius 3 squared. Um, but with a situation like this, we don't have just a bunch of point masses or discrete masses. Um, we actually have a continuous distribution of mass. So what happens is this sum will become an infinite sum, otherwise known as an integral. Um, and, well, you still have r squared. And then each little bit of mass um, becomes an infinitesimal chunk of mass called dm. Well, coming up with that dm is often the, the hard part. Um, well, I like to think of it as a unit conversion. You could say, well, mass is mass per area times area. Well, so a little bit of mass would be the mass per area times a tiny chunk of area. And then it would be, say, up to us to def figure out what little chunk of area makes sense for us to use here. Well, what I'm going to do here for little chunks of area is I'm going to use really skinny rings. Right, so these little skinny rings um, will will have a radius where the the radius of the little bitty ring will be r, and then as we're going to see, the area of this ring would be its circumference two pi r times its thickness, which is a little bitty wiggle in r. That's kind of easy to see if you imagine chopping this yellow ring with a pair of scissors, and then kind of spread it out into um, like a line like this. And then the thickness of this line would be dr, and then the length, the entire length of the line um, would be 2 pi r all the way around. So again, if that you just sort of snipped this yellow circle, if you snipped it with a pair of scissors and kind of spread it out like that, um, you'll get this area of the circumference, or in other words, the length, 2 pi r, times the thickness dr. So this dA is 2 pi r dr. Well, let's plug that in. And so here is a relationship for a little chunk of mass. Um, so in the um, blue brackets there is the mass per area, and then the area is this 2 pi r dr. So that's a little chunk of mass. Well, so now we're ready to sh shove that into the um, relationship for a moment of inertia. So we have the integral of r squared uh, times, and then I just shoved everything in for uh, dm. So here it is in all its glory. Um, what I would do next is pull all constants outside the integral. Um, well, so first of all, these pi's are just going to cancel. Um, we have a 2m that can pull out, and then this um, difference of squared radii that are here. Um, so then, uh, and then we're just left with an integral um, over r cubed dr. Now, why is it r cubed? You had an r squared over here and an r right there that conspired to make an r cubed. Now, the limits of this integral, if we want to find the moment of inertia of this, of this uh, tube or toilet paper roll, is we need to integrate from the inner radius, r1. Um, so that'd be your lower limit, r1, and your upper limit will be r2. Well, so when you integrate this thing, uh, r cubed integrates to r to the fourth over 4, um, but then you need to evaluate it at um, r1 and r2. So you'll get uh, r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth over 4. Um, that's what that integral would evaluate to. And so we're almost there. Now, a funny thing that happens here with this uh, thing in blue, this r2 to the 4th minus r1 to the 4th, um, you get to use your pre-calc a little bit, um, that, or algebra 2. That's a difference of squares. Um, so 
what you could do is rewrite this r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth um, as sort of a difference of squares. It would be like r2 squared minus r1 squared um, times r2 squared plus r1 squared. Um, so we could rewrite what's in blue here like this. Now what's going to happen is this r2 squared minus r1 squared would cancel the very same thing here that's in the denominator. And so what happens when you multiply these two things together is you end up with an r2 squared plus r1 squared. Um, and then finally, with constants, you have 2 over 4 left over, which conspires to give you a 1 half. Um, so here it is, uh, circled in red here, the moment of inertia of a toilet paper roll or an annulus or a thick tube is a 1 half of its mass um, times the uh, quantity of the outer radius squared plus the inner radius squared. Um, so that's it. Hopefully you find that helpful.